Hi, this is John from Riverstone Audio. I'd like to uh, very briefly describe one of our newer products for 2017, um, which is a vacuum tube pin straightener. It comes uh, in a metal storage box. Um, it's used for 7 and 9 pin miniature vacuum tubes. Um, the vacuum tubes, for example, the B7G base might be 6AK5. B9A would be a typical guitar amp uh, tube, such so as 12AX7 or 12AU7. Um, the pin straightener itself, and we wanted to include a box because I've used these for many, many years, and I'd always wish some of the vintage ones would come in a storage box. That's the only reason behind it. Um, there's a end, one end is for the 9 pin miniature tubes, and the other end for the 7 pin miniature tubes. Um, this is machined out of a a uh, hardened stainless steel. I'll describe in a little bit why we wanted a hardened stainless rather than a soft material such as aluminum or brass. Um, and the very fundamental reason, um, the aluminum is a bit too soft or will actually transfer um, aluminum which is very reactive to a to a pin. And uh, again because aluminum is a reactive metal you can form AO203 which is an insulator and, it, and although it may only be in the nanometer range it will have some small influence uh, on conductivity, the resistivity. So there's uh, some fundamental reasons why we want a hardened pin straightener. Um, the other thing I'd like to maybe first describe is why even bother with a pin straightener? I mean, this is, we tried to keep the cost down, but it's still the cost of a pair of 56, match 56, 54 tubes. Um, well, there's a couple of basic reasons. Um, oftentimes, when you're pulling tubes in and out, or when you've received a uh, tube that you purchased, you may have slightly bent pins. Um, if you're not careful enough, would you pull them up, pull them out of here, um, or would you purchase them, you may notice some bent pins. And don't do this, I've been doing this for years, so don't use your fingernail to bend them. Let me purposely bend a couple of pins. Yeah, I mean, hopefully you're not going to find pins like that. All right? But suppose that you've got some bent pins like this. Um, let me unbend it. That's a bit exaggerated. Um, you don't want to put this back in for two reasons. One is you can damage the uh, glass metal interface. It's a bit more delicate than people think. These pins themselves are uh, an iron, uh, I'm sorry, a nickel iron alloy. The red band you see on a lot of these tubes is a uh, copper. Um, that's the Dumet um, connection you've got here. So it's a uh, nickel iron and the copper, the reason is you can't just put nickel iron into glass because it becomes porous. You form porosity from reaction. Um, if you put the copper sheath on here, um, it prevents your reaction. At any rate, you don't want to damage this this uh, interface between the, the, the pin and the glass base itself um, because that can decrease the life of the tube itself. The other basic reason, and again I don't want to put this back in here, so let me just show, um, this is a typical vintage uh, socket that you might find. And you can see the metal tabs in here. Well, imagine now that you have a bent pin and you're trying to put this in. Yeah, I could force that in there, right? But I'm going to do a lot, potentially do a lot of damage to the tube itself and affect its life. More importantly, I can do a lot of damage to these metal contacts within this uh, socket itself. And over, you know, repeat if you're a tube roller, you take this in and out a few times, um, you can do enough damage that the next tube you put in, which potentially has you know, straight pins or at a different angle, um, you may begin to lose contact. And, and so if you've got a loose contact between the pin and the socket, you can actually affect the quality in some cases, the, the musical quality in some cases. So there are some fundamental reasons why it's beneficial to uh, um, have straight aligned pins. One is uh, you don't want to damage the pin in any way. If you bend them like this, you, can, you have bent pins, you can have very high residual stresses here. And you don't want to shove this back into a socket and potentially damage this. For those of you that have replaced these things like I've had to do, um, you, know, you, you finally get tired of soldering in new sockets. Okay? Now, um, let me just demonstrate this very quickly, the, the process of, of uh, straightening some tubes. These are some GE 5670s. Um, and these I would call probably moderately bent pins. I, you know, hopefully you're not going to get any that are that quite that bad. All right. Um, you can just hold this in your hand. I recommend, and I tell our employees, you never know. There's always a probability that uh, if you've got high enough residual stress, you're going to 
break the glass, so protect yourself. Wear goggles also, right? Um, it's not worth speeding things up and uh, damaging your eyesight from, from glass. So at any rate, it's just a matter of pushing in, pulling back out, it's straightened. Um, some of us, even I, sometimes have a habit of putting it in and out twice. Um, no harm, all right? And so now you have uh, straightened pins, okay? Now, <clears throat> there is a limit to how deformed a pin can be and whether you can use a pin straightener. And it doesn't matter if it's our pin straightener, a vintage pin straightener such as this one. Um, you're, I'm sorry, in the nine pin side, you are, if you try to force this in, you're just gonna bend the pins more and potentially damage this interface, this important uh, glass metal interface, and potentially break the tube and cut yourself. Um, so be careful when you're doing this. What I recommend if you've got anything this severely bent, and hopefully you'll never see this, and again, try to protect yourself. You don't want to end up getting a cut when you're handing glass ceramic. But gently unbend these. All right, so something a bit more reasonable. Be careful, though, because you want to avoid any stresses. These are essentially cantilevered beams at this junction here. You want to be re relatively careful. You may never get these quite straight because there's a little bit of a kink in this one because it's been deformed too far. And you, you don't want to typically run the pliers right up to the glass either because you may dam accidentally damage that interface. At any rate, this would now be one that I could probably put through the pin straightener. All right. A bit of effort, all right? But again, it's about a five second process, all right? And you, you're not gonna get rid of this kink because this kink was from the initial deformation, which is too far, all right? But again, fairly reasonable. But hopefully you're never gonna come across, you're never gonna come across a tube that was quite that badly damaged, okay? Um, same thing for the, uh, the the uh, seven pin tubes, um, you know, moderately bent tube. Um, that's it, okay? And these should be straightened now, okay? All right. Okay, now I mentioned in, uh, in one of the cards it was shipped with some of the earlier pin straighteners and we don't generally recommend it for uh, Russian and Chinese tubes. I think I've, we're engineers here so we're a bit conservative. We don't want to have any disappointed customers. But it turns out um, this pin straightener is our daily driver also for the Russian tubes. Um, here at Riverstone Audio we do a heck of a lot of tube testing. If you, there's various test stations. This test station is only for 5654s and you can see in one month it's probably a month's worth of effort by one of the employees. Um, probably a couple thousand tubes here. Um, this test station is for the Russian tubes. The other test stations handle um, 12 AU7 tubes, for example, or um, um, 5670 tubes. So we want a um, pin straightener that's uh, versatile enough to do all these types of tubes. Um, but in the, the card that I inserted, I said generally we don't recommend it for Russian or Chinese tubes. Um, for the newer generation, Russian, Chinese tubes, no problem at all. There's pretty good quality control. It's only some of the, the very old vintage Chinese tubes and Russian tubes we've noticed a problem, but that's once in a blue moon. Maybe out of five, out of 1,000 tubes, you'll have five that, that don't quite meet spec, um, or maybe the circle diameter on the tube isn't quite right. This is a, this is a dud tube, um, 6N3P Russian tube. Um, this is the 6N3P EB. Let me... Um, and the, a lot of the Russian tubes have beautiful looking pins on them, by the way. And a lot of them are quite high quality. You have the same reject rate. Um, you know, when we test these 6 and 3 P's, the reject rate may be up to 60%. Um, the ones that do test well are typically very good. But suppose we've got something like this. They're relatively soft pins. Um, no problem. And again, I always have a habit of putting it in and out twice. It's not really necessary. But as you can see, we've got nice straight pins now. All right. Some of these Russian tubes are beautiful looking. Right. I still prefer, um, I'm American, so I still prefer, I have to say, the, the good old U.S. tubes. But um, another Russian 9-pin tube, this is a, we do quite a bit of testing on the 6 and 6Ps. Um, and again, no problem at all. I've got a moderately bent pin. In and out, a few seconds, that's all there is to it. 
okay? What I caution people though is that if you ever feel a strong resistance, don't continue, all right? It means that there's probably something wrong. We've got a severely bent pin and uh, you don't want to have one of these things break. It's, you know, this will break in any pin straightener. It doesn't matter whose pin straightener is if it's uh, abused in any way, okay? Um, so anyway, I've, I've quickly reviewed uh, the importance of a pin straightener. Now let me go over, uh, again, some of the reasons why it's a stainless. Um, we chose, for good reason, to make this out of a stainless steel. This is a 420 stainless steel, which is a Martin Siddick stainless steel. We have, a, um, as I mentioned, a staff metallurgist, and, and uh, we always try to get advice on what would be the best material. We wanted a pin straightener um, for our own use that was going to last for years and years and years. Um, and we wanted a pin straightener that, um, you know, if we sold it, um, customers are going to be happy with. My guess is this will last a lifetime. This particular pin straightener, this one here that goes with this test unit, is probably already seen thousands of twos. My guess is probably close to 5,000. Still in beautiful shape. No signs of wear. Um, so we wanted something that's durable. We don't want a consumable. Now back to why we don't want to use aluminum or a soft material. Um, aluminum, as I mentioned, is a relatively reactive material. And if you take something such as a, a pin which is um, um, nickel and iron and you rub it and suppose this aluminum and I take this in and out take this in and out of here um, you will end up, you can't see it, but uh, trust me if you were to do a, a, some of the Ganoget spectroscopy on this where you're looking for the elements um, you're actually going to find some aluminum has been deposited on this. That's basic um, adhesion as well as uh, sliding contact wear. Um, the more times you do it, the more aluminum you're going to deposit. Okay, great. You say that I've got aluminum on here. The problem is, as I mentioned earlier, aluminum um, is a reactive metal. You very quickly form AO2O3, alumina oxide, and uh, that uh, is an insulator. And we don't want to contaminate these pins in any way. If you happen to have gold on the pins, no problem. I'm all for that. But you typically don't want to make this out of a softer material. Um, both because of pin contamination with AO203 and the other issue is you can very quickly um, wear out a pin straightener. Um, and we did prototype also in aluminum and some other materials. Um, so we ended up with a, a Martin Siddick um, stainless steel which is uh, heat treatable. We heat treat these to a Rockwell C50. Um, relatively expensive to make because you've got to use carbide tooling. You've got roughly one millimeter diameter holes that are about so deep. Um, but we and so there's not much profit in this thing. I want to be honest, there's not much profit, but we thought it was a useful um, tool to have, and we think it's an important tool to have, um, primarily to prolong the the life of these vintage tubes, and um, also so that the customers that of our tubes that um, um, aren't going to end up, uh, you know, when they draw tubes, um, damaging any of their sockets, and against the pain in the neck to to replace those. So I think that's probably um, all I want to say except for one last step. Some of you may wonder why there's a, a, a large cone angle on this. If you look at this, this end of this. We went through many design iterations. I also looked at some vintage, um, vintage ones. This one has, I consider, too large of a, an angle, too deep of a cone on here. The co by the cone, I mean the transition blend um, between the outer surface here down to the pin. Well, if you end up and we've prototyped a lot of these and then tried them. If you end up having something that's relatively narrow here, and suppose that you've got a, and again, don't, please don't bend these by hand because you can end up breaking a tube. Um, but suppose I have something like that, you're not even going to get this in. And we're afraid that somebody's going to try to force it and really end up breaking or damaging the tube. So you have to have a generous enough angle here so that this can smoothly slide down. You don't want to have much stress again on this glass metal interface. The other reason is, if you were to look at this at high enough magnification, many of the tubes will have a buildup of contamination or a reaction when these um, uh, metal pins are inserted into the glass. And it's actually typically can extend a half millimeter, maybe a millimeter or more. And you sometimes see that on, on uh, particularly some of the U.S. tubes. And you can imagine now that if you've got that buildup, and you're trying to force one of these into very narrow holes, the tube won't go in all the way. Um, you know, it's almost like taking, or if you've got a kink kink in the pin, it's almost like taking this end and trying to force the tube in it. 
you're going to end up damaging the tube itself. I think probably that's uh, enough said for now. Um, again, uh, we think it's a, a relatively durable product. We think it's going to be around in your workshop um, for quite a few years. Um, and uh, we tried our best to keep the cost down um, on this particular unit. We, we do think it's a, 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 you know, the real deal. This is one that we think you're going to have for quite a few years. Thank you.